Hello, everyone. Today, I want to talk about the GDB, the GNU debugger. You have your text editor open, you have your compiler, and then things sometimes go south, right? Students come to me and they say, Gustavo, there is this segmentation fold happening in my program. I have no idea what line that is. Uh, this thing is calculating things wrong. I have no idea. I cannot go in step by step, break my program. So this is where GDB comes and brings the solutions to the table. Right, GDB, just quickly, GDB is this thing that allows us to debug our program, right? So I think most importantly, right, if you come from any other IDE like Visual Studio, C Lion, they have this debugger already embedded inside, right? So you can go and you can add some breakpoints to a certain line of your code or more than one breakpoint where the execution is going to stop. Then you can go and inspect things. And talking about inspecting things, right? The idea of being able to watch and output the value, right? The current value of that variable right you have a variable x you have a variable salary you have a variable whatever you're trying to do right you have an array of bytes can i go and inspect and watch the value inside of those variables with gdb we are able to do that the idea of the whole idea of debugging things right is step-by-step -step execution so i don't know if you ever have that sad time that you have to go and start putting a lot of print statements to go and say enter here enter here enter here print a print b print c so instead of doing a lot of console logs or instead of doing a lot of this print statements uh, you should be able to go and do a step-by-step -step execution right where am i entering am i entering this if statement am i breaking my while loop before i should break so all these details a step-by-step -step execution that is what gdb also provides to us and of course, if you want to, there is also options of doing real-time change in your code. So if you are debugging your system, if you want to go and say, okay, what if I change this variable value to two? Does this fix my bug? So you can uh, inside your execution, you can go and you can change values of the variables. But I think enough talk, right? What I want to do right now is I want to go, I want to open a quick terminal. I want to show a very quick vanilla basic example of a C program that I want to debug. And um, I want to go and quickly show how we're going to approach this with GDB, right? So let's just say that I have here, I have inside my source folder and I have something called factors, right? And again, it's a very vanilla source code. So um, if I just list my files, I have a factors.c, which is a very basic C file. If I quickly just open with my text editor, you will see that uh, I have very simple things here. I mean, I'm just including the standard input output because I want to be able to print things to the console. And then I have these two functions, right? The first function is called the sum of all digits of a number. So if you pass a number uh, and that number is composed of two, three digits, the goal of this function right here, the sum digits is receiving a parameter n, it goes and it breaks the digits of that number and then just adds those digits together. Right, so if I have things like uh, four, right? If, if it's the number forty-two, the sum of the digits will be six, right? Because four plus two is six. You get the idea. So that is what sum digits is doing. Uh, I also have another function that I just realized that uh, I noticed that there is a bug with this function, right? So the call of this function is the sum of all the factors of a number, and as you would expect, this sum factors function receives an n parameter and then it goes ahead and performs the for loop the tests to check if a number is a divider of something else right and then when i say a divider is when we divide things perfectly right so two is a divider of four two is a divider of six four is a divider of 16 so you get the idea the whole point of this function is to sum all the factors of a number and down here as we can see i have my normal main function all I am doing is basically just going in and hard coding, right? Initializing a number variable with the value 60, because then I just want to go and ask my program to sum all the factors of 60 and sum all the digits of 60, right? So I, I just go ahead here and I print sum of the factor is sum f and sum of the digits is sum d. So if I just come here and I ask to compile, right? So new compiler, I want to compile factors.c and I want to create my object, my output. Let's call this factors, right? This is going to be my executable. So it parsed everything, checked all the C rules, everything looks good. And if I look now, I have my factors, my executable there. If I ask to execute, right? 
dot forward slash factor. So execute the factors executable from this folder. There we go. We got this result back. It says 108 and 6. Well, the second one, the sum of all the digits, we can kind of see that it looks okay, right? So 6 plus 0, right? The sum of all the digits of the number 60, 6 and 0, it's 6. It looks okay. But the first one, 108, let me just cheat. Let me open here quickly Wolfram Alpha and just say sum of all factors of the number 60. And it's thinking, and it says, assuming that the input is actually referring to all the divisors. Absolutely, right? That is the actual thing that I want, the divisors, right? I'm calling it factors. So sum of all the dividers of 60, 160. So that is absolutely not what we had here, right? 108. So we do have a bug. So what I want to do right now is I want to start executing the GDB tool to see if it can help us kind of figure out where this thing is uh, breaking, right? Where our mistake in the calculation is happening. Uh, there's no segmentation fault going on. It's just basically a matter of understanding and using a breakpoint to go step by step and see, okay, can we figure out what is the line that is giving us the bug? So that is exactly what we're going to do now. I'm going to go back to the terminal and then we're going to execute GDB to see how we can go and use a debugger to really go and help our lives as programmers. Cool, so we just found out that our program has a bug. The sum of the digits seems correct, but the sum of all factors is wrong. We did this ad hoc check with Wolfram Alpha. I trust it, so I would go with what Wolfram Alpha is saying. All right, so the result should be 168, so something is missing. So it should be nice. Yeah, we could just go and do this very naive approach of visually coming here and trying to look for the error here in the for loop, do everything, but Maybe let's use a debugger. And I'm not talking like a debugger as putting a lot of print Fs here to try to debug visually. Uh, I want to use an actual debugger, right? Making breakpoints, executing step by step, being able to pause, continue my execution. That is the power of GDB. So let me just quit. GDB stands for GNU debugger. And for us to work with GDB, I need to do a couple of things. I need to change the way that I compile my file. So do you remember how we had the GCC? We said factors.c and generate the output factors. Besides that, I need to pass another flag, another switch to my GCC. I need to say that I want to compile with the G flag. The G flag will keep the symbols of our source code active, right? The name of the functions, the name of the variables. I don't want to lose these symbols because they are important for the debugger. So that is why we're just keeping the dash G flag there. So I have to compile with dash G. And as soon as I compile with dash g, all I have to do is gdb and the name of my binary, factors. And here we are entering the GNU debugger. It says copyright GNU, all those things, and opens a little gdb prompt. Do you see how the last message says reading symbols from factors done? That is why we had the dash g there, right? We are bringing the symbols with our binary. Cool. So first things first, I don't like using the debugger without being able to see my code. So I could open a new terminal and see my code there, but I actually like saying layout next. And layout next, right, it just opens this little window for me. It says no source available because we are indeed not running anything yet. So what I have to do is, let me just put a little breakpoint. I want to force a breakpoint in our main function. The first thing that we execute. So I can say break main, right, so the name of the function. But you see that GDB has several shortcuts for this command. So I can just say, instead of break, just be main. This is the same thing. So I'm going to add a breakpoint to main. So it says breakpoint created in line 30. And I can just say run. As soon as I click run, I'm going to execute my program, but it will break at that breakpoint that I set. Good. And we can see up there the actual source code being displayed, right? With the breakpoint in the first line of our int main. Cool, so here we are, we are debugging our program, right? And we stopped at that breakpoint there on line 30, exactly how I asked. Right, so now here in this console of GDB, I can set several commands, right? If I want to continue my execution, if I want to display and print the values of the variables or the symbols that we have in our program. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I want to execute that line. So I can say next, and it goes to line 32. 
And if I want to actually see the value inside that number variable, I can just say print number, right? Which is the name of my variable, the name of my symbol. I can say print number or I can just say p number. So p number is telling me that number has the value equals to 60. Cool. Let's continue, right? So if I type next, or I can just type n, right? As you would guess by now. So if I press n, I move to the next line. And I just want to point out something that whenever I hit n, it goes to the next line, right? It didn't step into that sum factors function. If I want to step into a function, I have to write a step or s that will go to the function, right? So let me just continue here with n, next, next. If I just print sum f, hmm, we already have the error, right? So it's too late. I think I need to start again and maybe step into that function to see what's going on. So to start again, run. Run will say, the program is being debugged. Do you want to start from the beginning? Absolutely, yes. And we are back to our breakpoint in main. The breakpoint is still active. There is also something that I can do. I can add a watch to variables, right? So instead of having to print them every time, I can add an, a watch and say that I want to watch the variable number. So every time that the variable number changes, GDB will warn us and will say, what was the old value, what is the new value now? So let's keep next, and do you see, as soon as I change the value of number, my watch point here says, oh, the variable number changed. The old value was that thing, which is probably a memory junk from the old memory address. And now the new value I'm assigning to the value 60. Beautiful. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to hit next and then just skip to the next line. I want to step into that function. So I can say step or just S. Step into. Now we are inside the sum factors function, which makes sense. So let's just see if we can spot something wrong here with the way we are calculating the factors. So just visually going there, right? I, I'm starting a variable sum with zero, and then I have a for loop that probably goes all the numbers. And then if that number divided by i is equals equals zero, meaning if it divides perfectly, then it is a factor, it is a divisor. And then I sum plus equals i. So let me just see here. Next, so I start sum with zero. Next, print s. Oops, it's not s, so print sum. Sum started with zero, which makes sense. And now we are going from i equals one. So let me just watch i. I'm going from i equals 1 to i less than n. So n, next. So the value of i started with 1, next. So if n, which is, let me just print n here, 60, right? So if 60 mod i, so if 60 divided by i, the remainder is 0, I assume that that is going to be true, so I add i to my sum. So I'm adding 1. So 1 is one of the factors. So now my i is 2. So we have a watch point, right? We have a watch in the i variable. Now GDB is saying, well, the old value was 1, the new value is 2. Makes sense. So I think I have a very good feeling that if I keep saying next, so value now is 4. 6, right? It was 5, now it's 6. I have all these things right here. So let me just put a breakpoint on line 23 because I just want to make sure that I'm getting only the factors, right? So let's create a break on line 23. So we have a break on line 23, and now I should be able to say continue. And we would just stop where we have the sum. So if I click next here, let me just print my sum, 31. If I print my i, 10. So now my i is 11. If I continue, my i is 12. Continue. Good. So 12 is a factor. Let's continue, continue. Since we have the watch in the i, it's just saying that i is changing from 13 to 14, 15, 15, factor. Continue, so it's testing everything, 
right? All these 37, 38, 43, 45, 47, 48, 49. So factors, no factors, no factors, no factors, no factors, no factors, no factors. So 59, and if I click continue, 60. But I have a feeling that if I click next here, it didn't go and execute for the 60. So I think that is our problem. It's looping all the numbers, but it's not including 60, the actual number in the calculation of the factors. So there is our bug, right? So what I have to do is, let me just quit my program. I think we found a bug, right? Quit the program with Q, quit anyway. Yes, I wanna quit. Now let me just enter this factor as C. Let me just come here quickly and I think that's our problem, right? We are going from one until less than n. So let me just go less or equal than n. Let me just save and quit. And now, if I just compile raw with node g, and if I execute factors, 168, which matches Wolfram Alpha, right? 168, that's exactly what we expect. Perfect. So. If our program is matching Wolfram Alpha, I'm happy. So that is what I wanted to show you. Of course, this is a very simple program, but with the simple program, I wanted to show the options that we have to debug things, right? I can enter GDB, I can next, 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 I can continue, I can add breakpoints, I can add watches, and those things, they are super useful for us whenever you're trying to debug, find bugs. If you have a segmentation fold in your program, it's very hard to visually try to find where that segmentation fold. If you're accessing invalid memory, if you have a dangling pointer, if you're referencing a no pointer, where is that thing? With GDB, it's easier to just kind of go there and step by step, you will see exactly where your program breaks. Perfect. So now, hopefully, you got the idea of where and why we use GDB, right? At this really essential tool. I would say that it's pretty much essential to my work as a C programmer uh, to go, or C++ programmer, to go and break my execution, and analyze what's going on, especially when you're starting having things like segmentation faults, you know, these really bad items that you're trying to execute. And if you just rely on the runtime error, you're not going to be able to see exactly what is the line that is throwing the error. So you will see. GDB is this really, really essential tool for us as C, C++ programmers, and it really makes our life a lot easier. All right, so if you want more technology-related content, especially when it comes to computer science and software development, subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you use GDB already, or if you have any opinions, or if GDB is better, if you have any other better, better tools, you can also uh, add a comment on our section. But if you want comprehensive courses on computer science topics, game development, mathematics, you can always visit our website, picuma.com. I'll see you there.